and this video is continuing on monitoring and controlling as a process of financial management. It can be found in the business studies syllabus here under processes and we have looked at cash flow and balance sheet and this is going to be the income statement. So what exactly is the income statement? It can be called a few different things. Some businesses call it an income statement. It can also be called a profit and loss statement or a revenue statement. So if you see any of those terms, please interpret it as an income statement. In general, the income statement tells us about all the revenue generated in a company and then the expenses. So at the end of an income statement, you find out what is the profit. Of the business whereas if you look at a cash flow statement that tells you about how much cash you have coming in and out of the business over a certain period of time and a balance sheet tells you all about what the business owns and what the business owes so each of these statements have different purposes but things that you see in the income statement you'll see again in the balance sheet and also come up in the cash flow statement why do we need an income statement? It helps our business to determine its profitability and efficiency. And efficiency is all about increasing your output by minimizing your costs. And your costs is the big part of the income statement that we are looking at. So when you want to determine what is your profit at the end of it, you take your revenue, so all the sales that you generate, and you minus all your expenses. And we can categorize our expenses into two sections we've got our cogs and we've got our other expenses now our cogs is our cost of goods sold that's the expenses that are particularly involved in the good or service that you have sold and your other expenses are more so your fixed cost that you're going to have whether or not you sell some good or service things like security insurance um, electricity you're going to have them either way once you have determined your net profit, that's the bottom line of your income statement. That is what then the taxation office is going to work out how much tax you need to pay. So this is really important that you get this net profit figure correct, because if you don't, you could end up paying more tax than you need to. And if you undervalue your net profit and you complete your records um, falsely or have errors in it, then you could actually get in trouble for not paying enough tax. And this is what an income statement looks like. Once again, we have the title and the date, very important to any financial statement. At the beginning, you'll always see your sales revenue as the first thing that comes up, and then you take away your cost of goods sold. So essentially, you look at the things you're selling, and then you take away the cost of the goods that you have sold. And that gives us something called the gross profits. That's your profit purely just from selling goods and services. Then you take away all your other expenses that you have regardless of selling or not. And you finally get the net profit at the end of it. So what is revenue? Like I've said before, it's all the funds flowing into the business. So that includes cash and credit sales. It includes rent coming in from your investments, your interest or any sort of dividends, any money that you are earning. Your cost of goods sold is then the direct cost attributed to producing the cost of goods sold. So that includes things like your materials, your labor costs, any sort of inputs that you've been using in that. And the way that you calculate COGS in your income statement is you take your stock at the beginning of the period, then you add the purchases that you have made during the period of stock and you minus the stock at the end of the period. And that will give you the stock that you've actually sold and the cost of that stock that you've actually sold. So let's look at an example. If we're trying to calculate our COGS, we'll say that this uh, company A produces glasses. So they have $10,000 worth of glasses in their stock. And that's what it's cost them to produce it or buy the glasses from their supplier. Then they have made additional purchases because they needed more stock it was summer and they needed demand um, there's lots of demand for glasses then so people buy them and then we have got their closing stock so the closing stock is what they're left with at the end of the period altogether that means that they had at some point in time in their inventory they had fifteen thousand dollars worth of stock at some point 
at the end of it, they're left with 2,000. So if you're left with 2,000, that must mean that you have sold $13,000 worth of your stock. And that is the value of your cost of the goods sold. You have sold $13,000 worth of stock. But that $13,000 is how much it actually costs you to produce or buy that particular stock. When you sell it and in your sales revenue, they might not be valued at the same price that you purchase them from your supplier, obviously you'll include some sort of profit margin. So your sales revenue might actually be $20,000. The value and the cost of the goods sold would be a $13,000. And so your actual gross profit is then your $7,000. So as we just mentioned, then gross profit is all about then taking that sales revenue and taking away your cost of goods sold. So in this example, we have sales revenue of $200,000. And we've got some other details here that will help us to calculate our COGS. So in order to calculate our gross profit, we know that it's our sales revenue minus our cost of goods sold. So the first thing we need to work out is what is our COGS? And that's our opening stock, which is $50,000. We've made some purchases of stock of $10,000 and we've ended up with $5,000 left. That must mean that at some point we had $60,000 worth of stock, but we are only remaining with 5,000. So we have sold $55,000 worth of stock. And then going back into our gross profit equation over here, we take our sales revenue of 200,000 and we minus this 55,000 that we've just calculated and that will equal to $145,000. Your expenses, they're the other costs that you are incurring during your business operation. So it's all the other costs that aren't associated with the goods or services that you are selling. We can divide them into three different categories. We have selling and distribution expenses, financial expenses, and administrative expenses. So financial, sorry, selling and distribution expenses can include things like your commission, delivery expenses, advertising, wages. This is very common to the, very alike to the operating expenses that we saw in the cash flow statement. Financial expenses is all about how you source your finance and that can fall, all these examples can fall under that category. Your interest, just getting discounts for early payments. If you're writing off bad debts, so writing off bad debts includes, for example, someone owes you $1,000 and you haven't been able to collect it from them in three months and the business has eventually closed down and now lo no longer can pay you that $1,000. That's an expense to your business because you're not going to get that $1,000 back. And then administrative expenses has all got to do with the administration of your particular business, like your office staff, your rent, your insurance, your electricity bills, etc. Your net profit is what we see at the end of the income statement and that's the final bottom line of it. And what you do is you take your gross profit that we calculated earlier and then you take away all other expenses and this will give you your net profit. So the particular equations that you're going to need to know, especially for this financial statement, is your gross profit and your net profit. And your net profit, if you want to break it down further, it's simply your gross profit minus your expenses, but your gross profit equals your revenue minus your COGS. So you can also calculate it in that way. So this is what Coca-Cola's income statement looks like in their actual financial reports. And you can see that there are some very commonalities, some big commonalities with what we've gone through in our example. So for example, they've started off with their revenue and they've got their cost of goods sold. And at the end of it, they've generated a gross profit, which is $17,145 million. Then they have taken away some other expenses associated with it to get an operating income of $7,922 million. And they've taken away then even more um, expenses because they've just categorized it that way to end up with their total income before they pay their taxes or their total profit before they pay their taxes as $8,366 million. Now, please note that 
if uh, any value of your income or your profit here is in brackets, it means that you've made a loss. It means that it's a negative number. And finally, at the end of it, you take your taxes away and they paid a very significant amount of money in taxes. And your final amount here is your $6,920 million, which is your profit that they've made.